This video is sponsored by Grammarly. So if you're like me, your exam season probably looks something like this. Two weeks before exams, you suddenly remember you need to study and then quickly realize I understand nothing. Not only that, but you start spiraling and become an anxious puddle of tears because you don't even know where to start studying and you're feeling completely overwhelmed. Are you kidding? Really? It's true. Oh my god. You got this. Fighting girl. Fighting! Ah! Oh, I can't. So thankfully, I did survive my final season and ended up getting the score that I needed. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you guys what I do to get A's on my exams, and hopefully these tips and routine will help you get the grades that you want. Let's get down to business to defeat exams. I know I'm being overdramatic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. So to begin with the game plan stage, I first start off by getting to know the exams, dates, resources available, type of exam, percent of my grade, etc. And it's just really helpful at this stage to read through the syllabus, see if there's any other information about the exams. This way you'll have somewhere where you can see clearly just how many exams you have to study for and just what to expect. And this is a tip for anyone who's taking standardized tests like AP exams, SAT, but many times I noticed that my classes would either not cover some material that was ultimately on an AP exam or that it would cover some material that ended up not being tested on the AP exams. So prep books and also the websites that go along the standardized tests like the College Board will also be your friend because they have actual old exams. They also have their official PDFs that talk about the exam so they're just a very reliable standardized source to use speaking of assignments other than your finals grammarly can help you juggle all your coursework during finals and exam period so Grammarly is an all-in-one writing tool, so not just a spelling and grammar checker, that improves your productivity and saves you time when you have multiple assignments to complete. It's free to download and easy to integrate into your daily life, and it works where you work, like Google Docs, to help you work more efficiently. Grammarly has a free version with basic and grammar spelling suggestions, but upgrading to Grammarly Premium will save you so much more time with their advanced features so you can feel confident your writing is compelling. Succeed on your finals and work more efficiently with Grammarly and avoid losing out on easy marks. Instead of using multiple websites to find new words, use Grammarly's free synonym feature to replace your overused words. And since it's also hard to juggle all of your assignments during final season, especially with all your different classes, you can get the right message across with Grammarly's free setting goal feature to ensure you're writing to the right audience. Upgrade to Grammarly Premium so you can get your work done quicker and save time finding citations with Grammarly Premium's plagiarism detector. So overall, I've been using Grammarly for around two Two years now and I 10 out of 10 recommend it to everybody which is why I mention it in basically every single one of my videos since it just helps so much with checking papers and honestly I just use it for all my assignments just to double check that I didn't make any mistakes so with finals and exams coming up succeed in school with tools like Grammarly it's free why not go to grammarly.com slash study to success to sign up for a free account and if you'd like to get extra features upgrade to Grammarly premium for 20% off to help you save time and work more efficiently so before I make an actual game plan for my studying, the first thing I do is take a practice test for each of the classes that I haven't examined. So once I have taken the practice exam, I write down my percent score and then writing down the general topics of the questions that I missed. So this helps me determine what are my weakest areas and which chapters I need to review first. And so now that I know which areas are my weakest and roughly what my percent score is if I just go in blind, I ruthlessly prioritize my time during the exam weeks and leading up to them based on the importance of each exam for my grade. 
and again the situation with how prepared I am even without studying. So I know this might sound pretty ruthless, but I ultimately figured out this system when I was taking a ton of classes in high school and I realized that I simply could not prioritize every single exam equally. So just as an example, my senior year I think I had like 10 AP exams and I also had three dual enrollment exams in the same semester. So I had an insane amount of exams and one of the classes, I think it was SAS statistics, I did a calculation and realized if I just got above a 42% on the exam, I would still have an A in the class. So I realized that I was just pretty much not going to study for that exam at all and prioritize my other exams. So sometimes you do have to be strategic about it and if you just don't have enough time for all of your classes and all your exams, you need to choose which exams are the most important to you, which classes you want to prioritize depending on maybe your major or your goals ultimately, and finally also based on your current grades in the classes as well as how well you did on the practice exam. So you take this into account, you determine the grade, the minimum grade that you need on the exam in order to get the ultimate grade that you want in the class. You look at the grade that you got on the first practice exam that you took, you look at how many weeks or how many days you have left and how many exams you have. Have, and then you use all the things you did during the three previous steps to finally determine what is your calendar and schedule for the exams roughly how many hours you have between them and which ones you want to prioritize. It may sound ruthless, but in my experience it's very effective and essential especially when you have a ton of exams. So now it's time for actually studying. So the first thing that I usually do is I go over the weak areas that I didn't do that well on during the practice exam and I take very minimal basic notes. So I pretty much just read through the chapter and just take notes on the things that I remember I missed on the exam or that I genuinely just didn't know. And if you don't have time to read through the chapters or they're just very, very long, I recommend reading the end of the chapter summary. They usually include all of the main vocab as well as the major concepts. So once I've gone over the chapters that I determined I needed to review, I watch the review lecture if there is a review lecture, since this can be extremely helpful in understanding the psychology of the professor and understanding which topics the professor prioritizes, as well as any other useful information they might slip to the students during the review lecture. So stage three is making exam summary pages. So I already mentioned this in my previous exam video if you want to check it out, but basically this is just where you write down whatever you highlighted and still struggle with onto one, two, three, four pages so that you can constantly review them and reread them the day before and the morning of the exam. Also, I don't always handwrite my exam summary pages. A lot of the times if it's math or like for example, my marketing class that I had last semester, I decided to type out and then ultimately print the pages, the exam summary pages, instead of handwriting them. And this is just easier, especially when there's lots of charts or diagrams, and it's just easier for you to type instead of handwriting it. So now that I have my exam summary pages ready and I have gone over all my weak areas, I just keep doing practice tests and quizzes as many as possible until the exam comes. So whenever I miss a question, I just write it down and then also write down an explanation of it and if I need to I look it up in the textbook again or in my notes go over again that topic or that particular vocabulary term and make sure I 100% understand it and again the more practice questions you do the better it helps you understand the psychology of the professor or the college board or whoever is administering and making the exams because after a while you start seeing a pattern in how the professor or the exam creator thinks and it will help you during the actual exam to understand how to approach the questions. Sorry. 
Good girl. Fighting! Ah! Ah! Oh, smart. Who's your smartest kitty in the world? Who's my meow gonna go? You are the kitty. Who's your smart kitty?